Welcome to the review of Revel's Eurofighter Typhoon Blackjack in 48th scale. Before I show you how I turned a rather challenging kit into this vignette, I want to thank all of my 15,000 subscribers. This is a big milestone for my little channel, but it would be even better if everyone watching would subscribe. Approximately 95% of the views my videos get are from people who are not subscribers. So please go ahead and click the button, it won't cost you anything and you won't miss future videos. If you want to support my channel just click on the thanks button and check out the description of the video. Now with that out of the way, let's get into more detail about the Eurofighter Typhoon Blackjack. As usual, the build starts with the cockpit. Coming from smaller scales, this was my first kit in 48th scale in approximately two decades. I am used to smaller and less detailed cockpits, which can be challenging. Therefore, adding detail and painting all the buttons was relatively simple here. To add more realism to the displays, I used Tamiya's clear green over a black base. Decals for the instruments are also included, but I prefer painting them. I had to remove some material in order to get the ejection seat in there. Once the seat was in place, I was quite satisfied with the cockpit. The fuselage is split into two parts with the cockpit in between them. Before mounting the wings, you have to drill some holes for the pylons and actuators. The next step was the assembly of the wheel wells and air intakes. This was all straightforward, so I won't go into detail. At this point my plan was to have the landing gear extended, but later on I changed my mind. Then the real fun started. As you can see, the molding quality of the nose was quite bad. I used milliput to fill in gaps and started sanding the nose section. Next I assembled the air intake. You have to be precise here to avoid creating more gaps. After that I joined the fuselage with the wing section. Naturally this design causes even more gaps, but at least this kit is a bit better than the 72nd scale version of the Eurofighter I built before. However, the next steps required quite some work. First up I had to remove some material to fit this panel behind the cockpit. This whole section here with the dorsal spine and air brake did not fit very well. Especially when you want the air brake to be retracted. The flash inside the engine nozzle was also a nuisance especially because I did not have the right tools at the time. Anyway, this panel looked a bit dull, so I added a couple of wires. This was very fiddly, but super glue is your friend. Then I did some dry brushing to highlight corners and raise details. I added even more wires to the front section as well as the head-up display to add more interest here. My goal wasn't to be accurate about it, but to make this all black section more lively. At this point I also had to deal with all the gaps and little imperfections of the kit. I used milliput all over the aircraft, from the nose section, dorsal spine and wings, all the way to the vertical stabilizer. Before closing the cockpit I had to remove this seam line from the canopy frame. It's not a big deal to sand it down and polish it, but it's definitely none of my favorite activities in scale modeling. Then I masked the clear parts with masking tape and liquid mask. To glue them in place I used white glue to avoid the parts getting foggy. This can occur when using plastic cement or super glue. When all the parts were ready for priming, I used black one-shot primer for the wheels and nozzles. For the rest of the aircraft, I used Mr. Finishing Surfacer in grey. This first coat of primer showed all the imperfections that were still left. 
therefore I sanded down a couple of areas again. Furthermore I had to rescribe a few panel lines. At this point I also decided to leave the air brake in the retracted position. I had to remove a lot of material in order to achieve a somewhat good fit of this part. I super glued it in place and had to fill more nasty gaps. After I was finally satisfied with the surfaces, I used black primer on the areas that would be black in the end, leaving out the dorsal spine, horizontal stabilizer and nose. The nose, slats and other areas were then painted grey. After giving the paint enough time to dry, I masked off these grey areas. This was quite time consuming, but I wanted to achieve a nice paint job. Once everything was masked off, I used this red paint from Hataka for the vertical stabilizer and spine. Even though these areas were still light grey and not black, it took me several coats until the coverage was sufficient. In the end the color tone was nice, but the surface was quite rough. Therefore I sanded it with fine sandpaper and the result was much better. All this gap filling, sanding, masking and painting was quite time consuming, but it's great when the final result comes together piece by piece. Up next I masked off those red and grey areas and used Revell's Gloss Black Aqua Color as the main paint for the black check. Several thin coats and plenty of drying time later it was time to remove the tape again. I really like using liquid mask but it can be quite tricky to remove it. Also in some areas the masking wasn't perfect so I had to repaint some imperfections. Next area to work on were the engine nacelles. I used several metallic paints and masked off individual panels to get a realistic look. Furthermore, I used pigments and powders to create effects from the heat. Then I added some streaks using oils. I also used oils on the underside to create a bit of weathering. In the end these effects are quite subtle, but I like it. At this point I decided that I won't just put the aircraft on its landing gear. In order to show the colorful underside, I wanted to display the Typhoon mid-flight. Therefore I closed the landing gear base. This was quite challenging because the fit here was also really bad. When the gear bay doors were finally in place, I started placing the decals. For beginners these can be quite a challenge. So if you need any tips, check out my video about decal application. In order to align these large decals around the flare dispensers, I cut them into two parts. This made the application much easier. A big issue with these decals was that their dimensions don't match the kit perfectly. Therefore these actuators for the slats on the front of the wings are partially covered. I had painted them grey before, but as you can see, parts of that were covered by the decal. Furthermore, the decal doesn't go all over the wing like on the real aircraft. I noticed another nuisance when it was almost too late. Unlike the other decals that also cover the white areas, the decals for the canards don't, which means that the canards need to be painted white. The manual doesn't tell you that. But yeah, I could have noticed myself before trying to place the first one. And everyone who ever tried to paint the black surface white will understand my anger. I was impatient and the decal was already soaked in water, so the result isn't the best. I moved on to the other wing where I encountered the same issue when it comes to the dimensions of the decal. Luckily the decals are too large on one side, so I was able to use some of these remains to cover imperfections and these large gaps near the wingtips. The application of the remaining decals on the underside was straightforward, although some of them are tiny. I want to take this opportunity and ask everyone still watching to support my channel. 
I put a lot of work into both my models and videos, so leaving a like is highly appreciated. Also, try out this shiny super thanks button below to show your support. Thank you. So I moved on, placing all the decals on the upper side, which was not problematic. I used a lot of water, so I could slide the decals around on the surface. When the decal is in place, I remove any moisture and apply a few coats of setting solution. Last but not least, I had to place these decals for the walkways and no-step areas. To make life easier, I cut them into smaller sections. For the perfect symmetry, I measured them and used the same lengths on both wings. Then I added the remaining clear parts that represent position lights. Red on the left side and green on the right side. I also tried to make some improvements like these grey areas on the underside. Unfortunately I had already pinned the sprue with these ATD antennas. Therefore I scratch built them. I cut out thin plastic card triangles and added these brass tubes from AK. And I think the result is even better than the kit parts. Then it was finally time to unmask the canopy. Again it was a bit difficult to remove the liquid mask. Luckily everything was sealed nicely and there was not any paint inside the canopy. As a last addition I got myself this pilot figure from PJ Production. I watched a couple of tutorials and decided to try some painting techniques. I primed the figure black and sprayed white paint from above to create highlights. Then I used the glazing technique, which basically means building up many coats of very thin paint. Painting faces is very tricky, but luckily the helmet covers this pilot's face. The blackjack does not carry any armaments, but I wanted to add a fuel tank. As you can see I also tried some new techniques here. This weathered tank is a nice contrast to the clean and shiny aircraft in my opinion. In order to have both sides of the aircraft visible, I used a wooden board to build a simple base. I drilled holes for acrylic rods and printed out this union jack that I glued on the board. Once the background and acrylic rods were in place, I mounted the black jack. I used part of a clear sprue that I bent in shape and glued it to one of the acrylic rods to hold the aircraft in place. It almost snaps in place at the pylon, so it's quite stable, but I can also exchange it for another Eurofighter I might build in the future. And here it is, the Eurofighter Typhoon Blackjack in all its glory. I didn't want to ramble too much in this video, but this kit cost me quite some nerves. Apart from the usual gaps and fitting issues you find with many Revell kits, there were also mistakes in the manual. What surprised me the most was that the decals had the wrong dimensions. Anyways, the result counts and I quite like my blackjack with its base. Tell me what you think about it in the comments below and remember to subscribe if you haven't yet. Also check out my Facebook and Instagram channels where I post a lot more content than here on YouTube. I want to start my next project very soon and will definitely post about it there. This was the first 48th scale kit I built in the last two decades or so. My favorite scale remains to be 70 second scale, simply because I run out of space. Some people already asked and yes, I'm also thinking about getting rid of some of my finished models, so if you're interested, just contact me. I will probably refrain from building more kits from Revell. Of course they are quite cheap, but often you also need to deal with all the imperfections and lower quality. And that's not just me, I heard from many other modelers that they had issues with this kit. Well, that's all I have to say about the blackjack. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please support my channel and share the video. Leave your comments below and thanks for watching. Bye!